Hi, and welcome to Stalls TV. My name is Bob Robinson, and today we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about the top 10 reasons to own a vinyl cutter. Uh, everybody loves a good top 10. It uh, seems to draw attention to any type of topic that you're talking about. Uh, we are uh, excited that you're here. We, we're glad that you, uh, you join us in these uh, broadcasts, and we hope to see you in future shows as well. Uh, before we get too far along, can everyone hear and see okay? Just, you can reply at any time during these uh, broadcasts using your chat box or the questions box. Just start typing, let us know. Are we good to go? I'm assisted here by, with, by Taylor, who's uh, kind of doing everything but what I'm doing, so I appreciate her in the background taking, fielding your questions and uh, um, just making sure that everything's working smoothly. Um, I'm going to start off with, uh, with the poll questions. Uh, this way I can know who you are and exactly how to kind of gauge the, uh, the broadcast this morning. Uh, I don't have the questions in front of me, so I'll let Taylor take over from there. Uh, the question is, how long have you been in business? Okay, so it looks like 50% of you, um, you're brand new and you're just getting started. 17% one to three years, and again, 17% for four to seven years and over seven years. Very good. What question are we are now? This next question is what's what decorating methods do you offer? Gotcha. Okay, we're gonna close this. And twenty nine percent of you are embroidery and screen print. A hundred percent of you are heat transfer films, twenty nine percent sublimation, and twenty nine percent direct to garment. And our last is, do you currently own a vinyl cutter? Looks like, looks like everybody uh, currently owns a vinyl cutter. Everybody owns a vinyl cutter. Well, that's a little surprising to me. I uh, thought you'd be taking this opportunity to figure out why you should purchase one. Now you're just going to figure out why you did purchase one. <laughs> We're going to talk through some of those steps. Um, it's very n natural, as you saw there with the, uh, the different varieties of garment decoration, apparel decoration that, that you all are doing, everything from embroidery to screen print to direct garment printing, sublimation, all those things. The most commonly added piece of equipment after the heat press is going to be a standard vinyl cutter. And there are a lot of different models and different features and different types out there. We won't get into all of that as to, because they're all basically doing the same thing. Some just have a little better features than others. Some are faster, stronger, more durable. Uh, some will be, do better detail. But honestly, most of the detail cutting is more in the material that you're cutting for the most part. Uh, stepper motors, servo motors, you all have your cutters already. Regardless of where you are, they all do the same thing. They are going to cut designs out of vinyl of some sort. Uh, whether it be heat transfer films, which we specialize in, or even signed vinyl, which is why these were actually designed in the first place. You know, these plotters, cutters, vinyl cutters, whatever you want to call them, uh, are designed to give you the ability to uh, create designs uh, instead of printing or cutting the actual image. So if I need a blue design, I put blue material in the material, and I cut it, weed it, press it. That easy. Yeah, some designs not quite as easy as others. But why... Why this? Well, let's go over the process first of all. Even though um, a lot of you do have vinyl cutters already, in fact, all of you do, um, s some of you are still, like 50% of you are very brand new. So maybe you just got it. Uh, so I'm going to have to address this as if you know, some of you have never seen the process or you totally understand it. So we're always starting with uh, a, ro a, a roll of material or a piece of material. This happens to be uh, a tr heat transfer film. 
and they are always two ply. Two ply meaning the finished product, and when you're doing heat transfer, the finished product is attached to a separate carrier. I might get a quick weeder here and peel off the side. Bear with me. As you can see, there are two sections. You've got the finished product here. This happens to be metallic silver. Um, then there, the back carrier is just a plastic. You, when we're cutting, we are cutting through the finished product, not through the carrier. The carrier is there so that when it goes back and forth on the roller wheels, it doesn't bunch up and doesn't fall apart, so you can actually maintain uh, stability on the, on the uh, media. Uh, when I first show this to people who are brand new to this, they look and say, <laughs> how hard, it's got to be ridiculously hard to make sure that you're cutting just through the material and not through the carrier. It's really not. It's very fine-tuned, it's very calibrated very uh, succinctly so that we're dealing just in uh, small amounts that we're adjusting. And it's not the blade depth that we're adjusting, so those of you who are brand new, don't think that if you, got, you need, it's not cutting well enough that you need more blade. You do not. Dispel that rumor. You need your blade to be set just about the thickness of the material, uh, just so that we're just cutting through the media itself. When you are adjusting for extra depth, we're going to give it more force. It's done digitally on the, on the unit itself. So you're not really spinning the wheel. So you set the blade out just a very little bit, half a credit card thickness, we always say, and then uh, adjust everything else digitally after that. Always do a test cut, uh, as I have already done before we get started, so I don't want any bad things to happen on air. Um, so you're going to do a test cut, and that'll just, usually it's just a simple circle square type of design, uh, or a little cross or something, where you're actually using about a dime-sized piece of material. Always do the test cut first. So the process is pretty simple. Uh, we're going to load the material into the machine uh, with the, uh, f the underside or the adhesive side because it's heat transfer film that goes up. So that means we're going to mirror our design and cut it backwards. Let's go ahead and do that. I have another set of uh, roll of material over here that I'm going to use in lieu of that. I'm going to go ahead and switch you over to the cutter. This particular cutter that we're using today is the Roland GS24. Uh, a lot of you have uh, talk, you know, probably looked, as you looked through all these, you probably saw the GX24 show up many times. That was Roland's best-selling cutter for years and years and years, and when you said vinyl cutter, that's what came up first every time you Googled. probably still does. Uh, since then, a lot of other companies have made up ground on, on Roland, um, uh, the GraphTech CE6000, uh, is one that has really uh, come on very strong and very very good cutter. So a lot of cutters in the same range. Um, this happens to be the Roland GS24. Before I go any further, and I apologize for uh, uh, not saying this earlier, I welcome and encourage your questions and comments, unless it's something bad about me, then just keep that to yourself. But if it's a good question and, uh, and or something you would like to add to this, we're all friends and family here, uh, just please uh, type that in the chat box at any time, uh, and uh, Taylor will yeah, let me know which, what you've got to say or what you've got to ask, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. So, before we go any further, go ahead and put the, uh, put the material in. Pinch rollers, I don't know how well you can see, but you'll see the rollers on either side of the material. You need that material um, to be under the rollers not too far away from the edge because you want to make sure that you don't run off. I use the front and back grooves on this machine to make sure that my piece of material uh, lines up properly so that it tracks okay. Lock the pinch rollers down. Simple demonstration. Select sheet or roll. Get out of your way. Now this is a common um, problem that a lot of people in the front end don't realize why, what, hap what happens here. That's read the pinch rollers. It knows exactly where everything is as it went across when we, s we selected roll or sheet. Um, but it actually set its home point right there too. So we've got all this material that I have wasted if I start cutting from there. So people will remember to go ahead, let's go ahead and advance that material backwards with the keypad so I don't waste anything. But they forget to do one thing, which is set the origin point right now. And that's why if that material ever advances forward and you lost your six to eight inches every time, I said, this machine is killing me. I'm wasting you know, this, this material all the time. Just make sure that uh, you set your origin point like I'm going to do now. I almost forgot to do it. Now it's going to start cutting exactly from where I have it set. I have already done my, my, uh, my test. I've already done my test cut, made sure that it is cutting properly on the depth. Hopefully it still does that. Um, you never know what happens in live TV. I brought up my design in, um, 
Actually, I'm using CADWorks. Uh, it's something to consider if you're brand new. Uh, we have an online design software called CADWorks Live. It's an online design software with full of templates, uh, clip art, text effects, uh, it just a very, very easy to, to navigate and to be able to do f nice designs um, without really being a graphic artist. The toughest part of this whole industry is the graphics. Everything else is just a tool to get you from A to B. The graphics, that's the creation part. That's what really sells your designs. Now, what we've done, because uh, a big portion of using a vinyl cutter, most people, uh, when you, you know, what's the first thing that comes to mind when somebody says vinyl cutter, what are you using that for? Oh, it's names and numbers for, for ball jerseys. And it pretty much is. I mean, that has kind of been the mainstay. That's why most people get it, because, oh, every spring, all these teams want us to do their names and numbers, and we have to buy the numbers, or we have to order transfers, it just, or they want to screen print them, it's not cost effective. We'll get into all those reasons why later. Uh, but, so I'm going to be, I'm choosing to use a, just a team name with tail. We're doing the Warriors. I'm using um, the Sport Film Light today, and it's in a metallic gold. So I'm going to go ahead and send this cut job. Won't take but a few seconds. That's it. One of two things could happen at this point. If I had a whole roll, which is most cases you're going to be working with a roll of material, I just put a small piece in here. Uh, you would just advance this forward with the keypad. I can go faster if I hit the uh, enter button as well with my down button. I've got to go forward some more. And then I would cut that off. Now, with this particular cutter, they left a nice little groove here. Most of them do, where you can use a, you can just use a uh, um, little simple exacto tool type of knife, and cut that design off. Of course, you want to make sure that you have actually uh, advanced the uh, me the media past. I'm working backwards. I apologize. I can't even work this way. <laughs> I have to get in front of you. There we go. Make sure you didn't you advance it all the way past, or otherwise you will end up with uh, cutting off part of your logo. Now it doesn't look like anything's been done here. If you look very carefully, you can see the cut lines with the light hitting on it just right. So we're going to step over to the weeding table here and weed out the parts we don't need, and that's mostly what's around the outside and any cavities inside. Let me flip you to that screen. And one trick about weeding is to always start from the right side of the finished logo because of E's and F's and a lot of the different characters are open on that side. It just makes it a lot easier to weed. You don't get any resistance that way. I chose a very easy weeding material, Sport Film Light, just because I didn't want to struggle on camera. A lot of different types of material for different finishes, different types of uh, fabrics, and we'll talk about those as well. Don't need this part. Just go dispose of that. As you can see, we've got uh, cavities that need to be picked out in the S and the O and the A. And we'll just grab those with this handy weeding tool. One, two, and three. Don't need those either. One little trick, too, is while you're weeding something like this, and you've got a lot of weeding, you are actually be seated and you're in a comfortable place. Um, Keep something sticky off the side here. A lot of these carriers are very sticky, especially in the fashion film, some of the other products, the glitter flake. Have a little piece of that over here to the side. You can kind of stick all your little chads of material on that so they don't run the chance of getting stuck back on the design and, and transferring over. So we've got this design ready to apply. As you can see, it says Warriors. And when we flip it over the proper way, and uh, it's metallic gold, I'm going to go ahead and put that on a standard black 50-50 T-shirt. Stepping to the heat press, which is number four, Using the Hotronics Fusion, using a standard 50-50 black t-shirt, um, a lot of, again, a lot of different types of material available for every type of fabric out there. But this is going to be kind of what the mainstay is. Most people, especially with ball teams, yeah, there's those high-end uniforms. We'll show some um, examples of that as well. 
but you're going to get a lot of very budget ligs looking for just a basic cotton t-shirt or 50-50 t-shirt. You'll probably limit your offerings to them and say if it's a light shirt, you're going to put a black name and number. If it's a, white, a lighter shirt or a darker shirt, you're going to put a white name or number. Just keep your uh, offerings limited to them. I'm going to load the shirt onto the press. This particular material press is about 320 for 10 to 15 seconds, and it's a warm peel. So we'll let it cool down just a little bit. I'm going to do a light pre-press. Pre-pressing is just to take out the moisture and wrinkles. Moisture more so than anything. We just don't want any moisture in there to stop the, uh, this application from being durable. I'm going to step in front of you so I can make sure this is straight. Nothing more embarrassing than putting on a crooked logo. Good news is team names with tails usually have a slight tilt to them, so you won't know. Go ahead and lock that down. Didn't use a cover sheet. Don't feel like I need to. The carrier or that uh, the backing that we flipped over actually acts as that carrier sheet. You could put one on if someone was doing something on the press prior to this, like somebody may have been doing sublimation on here before I came, which they were. But I made sure I cleaned the pot enough before, so just make sure. And I let that go ahead and cool off just a little bit. I'm going to pull it off of there just so it cools a little faster. Lay it off to the side. Any questions so far? I know it's just the very basics, giving an overview. Hopefully all of you know that already. Some of you may be, thank God somebody showed me how to do that because I don't know what I'm doing yet. No questions. All right, you guys know everything. Glad to hear it. Uh, we do take your comments as well. All right, so let's get into the process. And not the process, but the reasons why. The big top ten. Top ten, to me, number one is versatility. Versatility. And I wish I could get you a, an overview. We don't have enough stuff here, chalkboards or anything, to write all these on. So take notes. They're going to be tested on this at the end. Versatility. Screen print look de designs. Any time that you're talking about apparel decoration, screen print comes to mind, number one. That's what they think screen printing is, is just putting stuff on shirts. That's screen print. It's a generic term, uh, even though we know better that it's actually applying plastic solving through a mesh screen and drying and curing and all that type of thing. But bottom line is they just want something on their shirt. Um, so you, we try to duplicate screen print as much as possible. You can do that with the vinyl cutter. The vinyl cutter, you know, the types of films that we're using these days are very thin. They can be very stretchable. They'll adhere to different fabrics. When you're all said and done, you're going to get a very, uh, a nice soft hand that's exceptionally durable. Peeling that off now, discarding that. And in just that little bit of time, now, yeah, I did a lot of talking there, but in just that little bit of time, we ended up with a, a pretty nice design on a, on a s single color design on a shirt uh, that it can be sold for a decent amount of money. To screen print that in one off like this is cost prohibitive. So you're going to duplicate screen printing, get a nice durable uh, one color design using the vinyl cutter. Second way, cut your own applique. Those of you who are embroiderers, uh, if you, you're cutting applique, cutting the fabric to actually be sewn permanently onto, onto the uh, up shirt or jersey or whatever you're going to. Big with um, not only uh, sports, not only you know, on-field type of football and baseball and things like that, especially the uh, professional uh, level and college level, but uh, also uh, Greek wear. A lot of good applique there. But you can do that now with this final cutter. Uh, not every cutter has the ability to do that. We want to make sure one has a good servo motor and that you've got the right blade. But most cases, if you've got a little bit slightly higher end cutter, you can cut your own applique. Here is a, here's a design that was already being cut out, just pure out, out of a twill, tackle twill. Uh, and this is sewn twill. This is the Spartans, and it's just a one color, gold. And you can see this is heavy duty tackle twill, I'll be able to cut off of this. Now, you're going to use the pressure sensitive type of, of tackle twill because it, it comes on a carrier to keep that tackiness from sticking to anything else because you need two ply every time you're cutting here. And you got to make sure that you're using uh, the right blade and a lot more force than you would for standard vinyl. I've cut this like at 70 grams of force on this machine. This would probably be upwards of 120, 140, maybe more with a 60 degree carbide blade, uh, but still very doable. Also, when you're cutting applique, also keep in mind that no more reverse. You're cutting this in the positive. You're cutting what you see. So we're talking about screen print type designs using your, using your heat transfer films. We're talking about cutting your own applique. You can also, if your cutter has an optic eye feature, 
like this one does, like the Graftech CE6000 does, just like the, the Jaguar 4. A lot of the different cutters out there have uh, the ability to contour cut around a printed design. Not everybody is ready to dive into a Versacam and spend anywhere from $8,500 up to $30,000 for a full color solvent inkjet printer cutter. But uh, using a simple inkjet transfer sheet like this one uh, gives you the ability to print full color, but because it's, it's, it's for dark garments, it's printing onto a white material in the uh, right media on the, in the positive, we need to cut around that. And so these, a lot of these cutters, using the registration marks that you see here, will, the optic eye will find these registration marks and contour cut around that image for you. So another added bonus for using the vinyl cutter. We have a question. Yes. Um, our question is, when selling to customers, do you advertise this method as heat transfer since customers may not understand why? Or, excuse me, understand vinyl. Yeah, that's tough. It is. Uh, you call it heat transfer. Even, even at that, the heat transfer name has gotten a bad rap over the years. We're really doing our best to, to crawl off underneath of that because, honestly, the heat transfer part is the, probably the fastest growing decorating method there is uh, in the industry today and the most durable and the lowest investment, all the reasons that we're going to talk a little further about today. But still, just heat transferred uh, versus vinyl. I don't like to use the word vinyl, period if I can do my best to avoid vinyl, because vinyl indicates to me just cold communication that it's stiff and shiny. It's something very heavy and that's on my shirt. I don't want that. It's supposed to be someplace else. Not on, it's on my car, not on my shirt. So I usually like heat transfer films is a good way to go. You can start making up, getting, getting uh, uh, creative. I had one customer who called their whole process just fusion. They heat fused the and it sounds like it's very permanent and very uh, scientific that it actually put the, these images onto the shirt. So, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. You have to, they have to know what they're getting, but bottom line is they need to know that you're, you're going to stand behind your work and it's something that's going to be very durable and colorful and, and, uh, and affordable for them. Any other questions? Okay, good. All right, so we're, we're screen printing, getting the screen print type of look. We're cutting our own applique. We're using uh, contour, we're contour cutting around printed images. You can also, exp this allows you to expand into markets um, like sports. Sports, we talk about them all the time. That's what these are largely used for, and that's kind of our bread and butter as well. It's what puts dolls on the map with sports lettering, uh, and it's a great industry to be in. Uh, it seems like it never dries up. There's never enough uh, decorators. It seems like there's more business than decorators no matter where you go. So team sports, very, very big, uh, opens up those, those markets, um, especially if you're doing just like embroidery now, like you're adding one of these on those, uh, adding team sports is a great way because it's, it's a one-off, it's a customization type of thing. Speaking of that, the next th uh, thing you can be adding is customization, whether it be uh, in a kiosk, you're doing one-offs while they wait, anything on a shirt type of logo, or if they happen to walk into your shop, if you have a brick and mortar store, um, they, can, they really can just say, you can offer them anything on a shirt, Within reason, of course, we're going to keep it clean, and uh, uh, unless you have like political reasons, you don't want to <laughs> put something on a shirt. But for the most part, uh, you can uh, you know, decorate on demand, keep X amount of shirts in house, and they love it. They love the fact that I can just go get it done. There's no waiting. There's no worrying online. I can just go get this done today. So personalization, customization, uh, also signs, decals. This. Unit. These types of units were born for this. Uh, it's, they started off as using the standard vinyl, the pressure-sensitive vinyl that was applied to the chloroplast signs for, uh, uh, for political signs and for real estate and or just the, the vehicle uh, lettering on the side of trucks for Joe's plumbing and heating and or just the little simple decals on the back, the little stick figures of dad holding mom's hand, holding the dog's hand, and the baby, and the, all those things. Those are all, and whatever happens, even that me memorial type of uh, logos for backs of car windows. All brand new markets beyond where you currently are. So it's going to open up the sports, the customization, the signs, the decals. So all that spells versatility, which is the number one uh, reason to buy a vinyl cutter, in my opinion. Uh, number two if you're taking notes, is value. It's a small investment for a big return, for a quick return. Not just a big return, but very quickly. But if you say, how quickly am I going to pay this off? When am I going to start making money? I've done the math. It's okay. You don't have to do it. Um, essentially, regardless of what you are applying to, whether it's going to be a basic T-shirt or whether it be a corporate wear left chest logo or whether it be uh, a jacket, 
um, full back, reflective, whatever the case is, for you to pay off the investment of your basic vinyl cutter, it's under 200 total pieces that you need to sell. That typically pays off your unit. So you can challenge that. You can look at it. If you're not, if, it, if that doesn't ring true to you, then you're probably not charging enough for what you're doing. Uh, but take a look at that too. And it's, that's a difficult question too, as far as we you know. What do you charge for each one of these? But um, you know, that's that's a that's a that's a whole nother whole nother seminar as well. But um, it is a very small investment. Most cases, I mean, you've, there are cutters out there for five hundred dollars or under. Don't totally recommend that level just because I expect to be in this for, for the long term. But if you've got one of those, they're going to do just fine. You eventually probably upgrade. Um, most of them are going to range between the uh, $1,600 to $1,800 range for the mid-range. And, of course, they can keep bigger, stronger, faster, and going uh, more industrial after that. Most cases in our industry, that's somewhat overkill unless I'm doing a ridiculous amount of cutting and I need some longevity. Or you just like the frills and the ability to do a lot more busting into the sign business where we're doing a lot more vehicle graphics, sign a little more wider, faster, stronger um, piece of equipment. So value. Versatility number one, value number two. Small investment for very quick returns. There's not much uh, other than like the heat press. Again, there's not a smaller investment that gives you something that quick of return on in the industry. Durability number three. No peeling, cracking, fading. Essentially, it outlasts the garment. Even screen print will start to eventually alligator and crack, and as it gets overcured in the dryer after it starts to dry out, you start to get some of that little bit of a breakdown in the ink. In the today's, most of today's uh, heat transfer films, uh, I can't speak to all of them, but ones that I'm familiar with, uh, they're there for the life of the shirt, 50 plus washings and you're not going to see any real degradation, any real deterioration there. The blues, the colors are going to stay just as vibrant. It's solid color all the way through. It's not like it's printed on. It's not like it's sublimated here and there. It's, it is solid color all the way through the heat transfer film. So the durability is exceptional. So people want their stuff to last, especially when you're talking sports, especially when you're talking workwear, outdoor type of things. We're going to show some more examples as we go. It's hard not to overlap every one of these uh, different uh, categories of these top ten reasons because they all kind of work together for the same goal. Uh, not only versatility and value and durability, but short runs. Uh, we do you know, the ability to do short runs, meaning, meaning no setup fee. Your screen printers know that you, uh, you, there's, there's $25 minimum or on the average uh, per color per design. So if I've got a, uh, even if it's just a one color design, I have $25 just to start with. And they only want three shirts. Or you know, I've got over $8 that I need to put onto the cost of that just for just the screen charge to start with. Then the cost of the shirt and then the ink and the labor and the overhead, you got to keep building up. It becomes not cost effective. That's why screen printers have minimums. Nothing under 48 for us, or otherwise you're not going to like it. You're going to think we're gouging you. But it's the real deal. It's what we have to do. That's why many screen printers have a vinyl cutter to handle the short runs or to do the personalization or do the, uh, the customization. Add on one. Give me one more of these. You're able to do that. So uh, short runs. There's no setup fees, no screen charges. I'm able to, it doesn't really matter how few I have. It costs the same to produce one as it does to do 10. Now, at some point, you know, you get to 200 pieces of a one color design, heck yeah, get them screen printed or get transfer, screen printed transfers made. Have trans, visit Transfer Express, they can do this, turn those around in a day or two, and you're, you're back in business. So short runs, big, big. Quick turn, react to your customer's needs, earn their loyalty and their repeat business. Quick turn, somebody comes in last minute and says, oh my gosh, you can help me, little Jimmy just finally made the all-star team and they don't have a jersey for him, they gave me this blank one, can you get his name on this, he wants to play real bad. No problem. Look at it. Okay, what's the font? We do it. We cut it. Put it. We press it. You're in and out. They're in and out of there. You save their lives. They love you. You you were able to you were able to perform on demand. Uh, that creates loyalty. That creates repeat business. Customers coming in. Do them a favor. Don't even charge for it. Get me next time. I was like, yeah, that sounds crazy, but I'll tell you, giving something away now, getting something out of a buy now pays back big dividends down the road. So having the ability to do a quick turn, reacting to your customer needs immediately, uh, really does uh, help build uh, customer loyalty and, uh, and repeat business. Versatility, value, durability, short runs, quick turn, price options. It gives you an alternative price option for customers. Alternatives to... You've got a full, let me find something for you.
you've got a fullback design on a simple coach's jacket. Very affordable jacket, but they want something that large on the back. It has to be readable. You're an embroiderer. How many stitches is in there? How much do you have to charge for that? And they may love it. Maybe this may be the right jacket for that. Let's just say that it was more of a varsity jacket or something, you know, somewhere in between, uh, something a little sturdier that was easier to embroider into. But that in itself is another reason to consider heat transfer with a vinyl cutter is because even some of these small, lighter jackets could be able to do all the puckering. You don't have enough stabilizer to keep this from uh, really puckering up with a whole lot of stitches that you would use on something like that. So, yeah, I can do this for you, Mr. Customer. But I can do it with embroidery just like you asked, but, you know, it's going to cost you, you know, a lot because I have it on my machine for like half the day and it's going to be stitching. There's 50,000 stitches plus in here. Do you really want to pay that? Let me give you an option. Why don't we just go do it with heat transfer film? In this case, it happened to be reflective, which we'll talk about very soon. Um, but another price point option. Give them the option. These are just, these are simply awards jackets. We won the 2015 Bowling Tourney and... Our budget is, you know, $15 a jacket. Can you help me out? Yeah, well, you embroiders probably know that that's not going to be uh, feasible. Screen printers as well, because they only want a dozen of them. So giving an alternative price option is, is, a, is a great reason to have a vinyl cutter. Uh, another reason, reason number seven, special effects. There are a lot of different finishes that can't be achieved any other way than with a vinyl cutter, with heat transfer films. Uh, it's, they just keep many levels of bling, glitter. Let me find, well, we, here's, let's just start with this one, the reflective, reflective material. A very, very uh, popular uh, means of decorating. Can't achieve that really any other way than with heat transfer films. Here's just a sample that I've, it's not actually applied, but the many levels of bling, this type of foil sparkle, Nothing pops like that. I can't do that with ink. I can't do that with thread. I can't do that with sublimation. Only with heat transfer films can I get that kind of sparkle, that kind of shimmer. And there are different levels of that as well. Skipping past. Here's another similar one in an actual design, the dance logo with the same type of sparkle on it. This one just gives you a nice sheen, more of a metallic type of, of, of sheen that you see here. Now, those of you who are semi-unfamiliar, you see two color logos here. Yeah, this, you do them one at a time. So anytime you're going to double your colors, you're going to double your cost across the board. So make sure you charge accordingly. If it costs me a dollar to produce one color logo, it's going to cost me two dollars to produce a two color logo. Options like the actual glitter flake, which has become very, very popular. These are some just some dance yoga pants or sweatpants in my day we called them same deal. Um, as you can see, I have lost track of where it is. There it is. Uh, this is a very textured, very glittery. It's it's, it's it doesn't do it justice, but you've seen this stuff on there. The only way to get that type of dynamic sparkle and pop is using uh, the heat transfer films. And it doesn't have to be, you know, backing up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be the uh, the special finishes that really sells this. It's just the ability to put multiple simple screen print type designs in multiple locations. From left chest to the sleeve. You saw the pant leg. Get rid of that. It's just awkward anyway. Uh, to the back hem. Back hem of this hoodie. And then because it is a hoodie, I think there might be yep, a little something something here on the hood itself too. All these different options, I can put multiple locations. It's really not hurting me that much. I'm cutting all these logos at one time, separating them because it's all unattended cutting, and I'm going to come back and apply them at the shirt in different locations using different platens, of course, depending on the, where I'm applying to. Another example, uh, although this is not really a special finish other than just a neon type of look, uh, it's a great way to get a fluorescent type of look is using the, this hot pink onto this uh, fluorescent type of shirt. But again, these are difficult, some of these are difficult fabrics. Uh, I wouldn't want to try to embroider this uh, because it is, you know, it's very, very silky and stretchy and uh, very difficult to keep stable without puckering. Uh, it's, it's a lot of these different types of fabrics. Nylons are difficult for uh, uh, screen printers to do. So there's no real restriction with uh, heat transfer. Just use the right particular film. 
you need a film that goes on at a very low temperature to keep some of these uh, performance wear from scorching. So having the, uh, having the low temp application, as you can see, you can cut very fine detail. And that didn't take forever to weed. As you can see, as we did just earlier, this peeled up very quickly. You can weed a design like this inside in, in seconds and ready to apply. Sometimes it's not... Sometimes it's not the actual reflective material that you're cutting, but you're going to enhance something that already is ANSI certified that they have to have for their road work or paramedics in this case. You're just going to add some embellishment to it. As long as they have the required amount of reflectable material on here, we can put whatever we need on these areas. So being able to enhance something that's already done, purchased, this actually was actually a fabric material on here that was sewn on, but I can put the, uh, the paramedics, the EMT logos, et cetera, on those too. All suggestions, all things for you to consider um, and sometimes it's just making the extra money using, you know, stepping up to, uh, to a higher, higher end type of uh, garment. So, yeah, t-shirts. If I were to put this same logo on a t-shirt, it, it cost me the same to cut this chief's head and put it on a left chest logo for, for a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. But because I went to this satin baseball jacket, it's a higher end jacket. It costs the same for me to produce, but I'm going to lot, make a lot more money because it's a, it's a higher end uh, piece of apparel. We have a question. Yes, the question is, what is the best material for the low heat applications on a polyester shirt? Best material for, I believe the Premium Plus is going to be the one that gets going to give you the, the ability to drop down to the lower temps. It also gives you the stretchability. I am not a... Um, I'm not the, the media total expert. I know the print and cut media very, very well. I believe that the, the look into the Premium Plus. Bottom line is you want to look at the specifications and see how low it will go. You want to get under 300 degrees. If you have one that will allow and give you the flexibility to go under 300 degrees, that's the one to go to. And hopefully it's also one that has some stretch and rebound and gives you that rubbery type of hand that blends in with it. So one that, the best one is one that applies under 300 degrees. I've made a shambles of all of our samples over here. We're going to move on. A special effects, not only but the many levels of uh, bling, but glitter, flock. Um, kind of the original CAD cut material is flock. It's that velvety type of uh, um, flocking type material that gives you that little furry type of feel. Gives you a little three-dimensional type of feel. Kind of it replaces a little bit of embroidery. Does well on things like, um, uh, what do I want to say, the, uh, uh, the blankets. You know, type of that type of um, microfiber type of, of jacket type and, and, and blankets, anything that gives you that velvety texture you want to use. Uh, it's actually making a comeback. Used a lot in uh, a lot of different types of sports too, volleyball and soccer. They'll use, they'll use a lot more flock. Uh, glow in the dark. Yeah, glow in the dark. Some, just, again, it's not something you're going to wear every day and you don't want to shine everywhere. But, uh, uh, lots of really clubbing shirts, definitely for Halloween. Anytime you want to make a, make a statement uh, in the dark, that's a great way to go. Can't get that any other way, by the way. Uh, customization. That is our, that is the number eight. The thing with customization is, yeah, I can probably buy numbers and letters for sports jerseys, and a lot of people do. In fact, it's a great way to go. Buying number packs. We sell them. Ten, ten pieces. Varsity number eight, or eight inch, uh, uh, one through ten, or one through nine, zero through nine, available to you, very affordable. When it came to the names, I'm not so sure that I want to lay out every individual letter. So one way to do that is, if you're doing sports jerseys, is to buy the thermofilm numbers. Those are very affordable, easy to lay down, easy to line up. I'm going to cut the names, and, and, and that'll match up the same material on the CAD cut material as the ones that are die cut and preset ready to go. However, you've got customers who come in and say, you know, but um, I really want this font. We want to be cooler than the rest of the kids. I want to have, can we, you, with this, there's no uh, restrictions. By cutting your own, you can put things on an italic tilt. You can use any, set, any font that's loaded on your computer for the most part. So now I can do some things that aren't off the rack. I can also fit the guy's last name who is, you know, Wilkinson, who doesn't fit on the stand. If I use three-inch letters across there, it's going to have to go down his sleeves, and that's not league approved. I can shrink these down accordingly so I can actually get them to fit on the shirt. I don't have to worry about all the layout there. There's no danger of me making threes out of E's and uh, when you're putting things backwards upside down because it's laid out specifically. My favorite, I am a, f a fan of doing, when I'm doing a team name and number, I'm sorry, a, a player name and number, 
I like them all in one. I do the player name with the proper spacing with the number below it. Yeah, it uses more material, but I guarantee you I'm going to lay that on a shirt and press it and be done. I'm not going to take the time to wonder, do I have this straight, do I have this straight, do I have them lined up, is the spacing right between these? It costs a little more, but my labor is worth more to me than the material that I bought. I love the fact that I can push it down one time and press it. So it doesn't matter what the size, uh, you can customize the size, you can customize the style, you can customize the color, uh, and you can customize the font. So customization, very, very big. The reason I own a vinyl cutter, customization. Uh, number nine, independence. Independence. You are in control and not at anyone's mercy. And that's very big. And I talk to a lot of customers who just are just as much of a control freak as me. Maybe not quite that bad because I'm pretty severe. But I like my hands on everything that I do. I want to make sure that it is done right, which is right equates to the way I would do it. <laughs> that's, a lot of us feel that way. If it's not the way I do it, it's my way or the highway. It's just I just don't feel comfortable trusting someone else to do it or making sure they got it done on time. My name is on the line. I'm the guy that they came to do the decoration. I want to be in control. I want to make sure that I can service and produce this on time, the proper way, exactly the way they conveyed it to me. And even though we do a great job, and a lot of companies do a decent job, there's always that chance that you can actually miss, you can lose some uh, communication somewhere along the line and not get the proper information conveyed the way that it should have been. And we go, ooh, you have to compromise or we have to redo. Being able to do it, being in control, total independence from anybody else is number nine. So independence. And then lastly, profitability. Um, everything that we listed earlier, all the top nine combined, all come together for profitability. That's why we're all in this business, right? I know a lot of you are just find this very soothing to weed and, and apply, and it's, 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 it's nice therapy for you. But ultimately, we're doing this to, to make some money. And being able to do all the different reasons, whether it be uh, you know, the short runs, the quick turn, giving them different price options, the special effects, the customization, the independence, all those things comes together to make more profit for you. Top 10 reasons to own a vinyl cutter. We've gone over them. Do we have any other questions? We are right on the edge of getting ready for our 45-minute time. No other questions. Um, so you all have vinyl cutters. Hopefully, something that we said today has kind of given you, like, whatever, an understanding as to, as to why this is a good decision and how we can make an even better decision for you. Uh, we appreciate your attendance. Thanks for viewing. Uh, we have, um, what do we have coming up next, Taylor? Do you know what's, what's on our next, on the agenda? Should have looked at this earlier. Yeah, check your Stalls TV guy who's got listed online. You'll see what's coming up. I know for a fact on Monday we have ex asked the experts with the equipment uh, Equipment groups, so you want to tune in for that as well. The morning show, prior to that, every morning, every Monday morning, the morning show comes on. That's a bit, it's getting some real uh, popularity, too. So, yeah, forget about Katie Couric and the rest of them because he's Zach and Josh. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate you. See you next time.